Hi, this is Mark Raven. I'm author of the book, Measures of Success, which shows you how, as the subtitle says, to react less, lead better, and improve more using a simple but powerful methodology called process behavior charts. To take a better look at your performance metrics and to better prioritize your improvement efforts. And in the book, in the appendix, Appendix A, I show you how to create an Excel spreadsheet as a way of learning about uh, the, what goes on behind the scenes of a process behavior chart, the formulas and such. You can also use a template that I've provided. And as you see here, if you go to the, the book's website, measuresofsuccessbook.com, and uh, you go under resources and click templates and more, you'll see uh, a number of um, you know, free tools you can download. One of those is an Excel template, which you can download. So I've already got that pulled up um, on screen here, as you can see, and uh, I've got some baseline data put in the chart. So you can see here, we've got the data. You can take what says, you know, point 0.1, point 0.2, you can uh, put a date, a month, um, whatever time is appropriate here. And here you can see the chart. Now, the one specific question I got was that, uh, you know, even though there's room for 46 data points and, and you could um, expand this, you know, you can do a number of things like, you know, just clicking and, and dragging to create room for more data. And that copies down the formula for the average, the natural process limits, if you don't um, have any shifts in performance along the way. But the specific question I got was about how to add more data points to the chart. So the best way I figured out how to do this um, requires a few clicks. So for one, we wanna click on uh, the data here. And there's a couple of different things we can do. There's uh, the highlighted cells here. So it shows we're using the first 24 data points. You can also see here in the formula bar that it's referencing um, you know, rows three through 26. So there's a couple of things that we can do. We can, if we want to you know, go ahead and leave um, a little bit of runway, you might not want to do this every single time you add a data point. So I'm gonna take these two boxes and, and drag them down, which now means if I added another data point here, that will now show up on the chart. But now the thing that hasn't done is extend the average and the upper and lower limit. So I'm gonna show you another method. I've clicked on the average here. Since uh, the, the time frame goes through row 34, but this data set um, only includes 26, I'm gonna put the cursor there, delete 26, put in 34, hit enter, and now you can see that continues the average line. So I'm gonna take the upper limit. I'm gonna use the other method of clicking and dragging from that corner, which extends that line. And here I'll do the formula bar, click 26 and enter 34. And now we've added um, some additional runway for future data points. And in a way, I think this is helpful because remember the one lesson as we look at here, what we see as a predictable system, there's fluctuation or noise, there are no signals. We would predict that future data points are going to fluctuate around this average and that they're going to fall within the red lines of the lower and upper limit. So that might be helpful in terms of setting expectations that performance will continue to be predictable unless we're able to improve the system. So I hope that's helpful. If you've got any questions, you can email me, at mark at markgraven.com. You can also go here under the contact section of the measuresofsuccessbook.com website. If you've got um, any questions, or if there's anything I can be helpful with, don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks for checking this out. Thanks for reading the book. And thanks for uh, learning how to react less, lead better, and improve more.